Dolphins fans are an interesting bunch. God love them. Because on the one hand, the ones that know, know that the best thing that organization could do was fire Brian Flores' his bum ass after that 2021 season. Like the only people that think that Brian Flores is a really good head coach are dipsticks and Chicago Bears fans. And they're one in the same. Like, Dolphins fans that really understand what they were seeing understood, understand still, just how much of a bum Brian Flores was. Everybody else is to blame but his dumb ass. He mismanaged the quarterback situation, mismanaged Tua horribly. His defenses were middle of the road like, no, three years was enough. No playoff appearances. His ass could go packing. Well, he won like six, seven games in a row at some point. And look at the teams that they beat. If you're going to say, well, that long winning streak was a reflection of Brian Flores' coaching. Well, so was the beginning of the season that started off doo-doo. Can't cherry pick the narratives here. The overwhelming narrative is, is that Brian Flores was a clown. He wasn't prepared yet to be an NFL head coach. He was done a disservice by giving it, being given a head coaching job. Skipping a level, this wasn't even a guy that was a defensive coordinator when he came over from the Patriots, he was a freaking linebacker's coach. Like, he was a rare guy as a minority candidate that actually got fast-tracked. Like, 20 years ago, you'd be looking at Brian Flores, who had been a defensive coordinator for years, still waiting for a shot in his late 50s, early 60s to get a job. So this is progress, like, this is good progress at least. He got fast-tracked, but why would you fast-track somebody from the Belichick coaching tree? I will never freaking understand. Have you not learned your lessons, NFL people? Holy Christ. I think the big thing that many Dolphins fans wonder, and I wonder it too, is not why was Brian Flores fired, because he should have been fired, because he sucked. Is that somehow Chris Greer, the general manager, was able to keep his job. Maybe we did find out he had a lot of dirt on the owner, Stephen Ross, huh? Because this failure of a general manager somehow was able to hire and fire Adam Gase, Hire and fire Brian Flores and be given the opportunity to hire a third head coach with no playoff wins. One playoff appearance. How does that work? Chris Greer, able to play the politics of the job. I gotta respect that shit. This is some Triple H Breakfast Club crap. Did he marry Stephen Ross's kids or something? I don't freaking know. But somehow Chris Greer gets a seventh year as general manager for reasons unbeknownst to me. But maybe by being persistent and being political enough or whatever the hell he did to keep his job that he doesn't deserve to keep, he's going to get the payoff at the end of the day. Because I'm really a fan of them hiring Mike McDaniel away from the 49ers to be their head coach. Like, he's this awkward acting, awkward looking kind of short little shit. But there's just something about Mike McDaniel that is refreshing. And maybe... You know, I'm getting too caught up in the way he conducts his press conferences and so forth. But he comes from kind of that Shanahan McVay coaching tree. You know he knows his offensive football. And at the end of the day, Brian Flores didn't know offensive football. This dumb shit was trying to make the playoffs with Ryan Fitzpatrick saying the hell with Tua. All the while, they didn't make it, so he looks like a clown. And then he keeps yanking Tua back and forth because he was an idiot. Did I tell you Brian Flores was dumb and incompetent as a head coach? Mike McDaniel, I don't believe is, time will tell, but I really like this hire because it represents to me a fundamental shifted focus of, hey, you drafted Tua, you've had him, now you're going into year three, you better hope to God that this pans out, that means that you got to give that young man all the help that you can. And they were busy in free agency for sure helping out Tua, which is what they should do. They took a risk and gave Teron Armstead from the Saints big money to be that left tackle. You know, we'll see. Like the 10 or 11 games he'll probably play. I'm certain he'll be worth it. You just got to hope if you're a Dolphins fan that he'll be there at the home stretch when you need him the most. I was really bummed that the Dolphins signed Cedric Wilson because I was looking at him for the Bears and saying, man, he's going to be a guy that doesn't command a ton of money on the market, but he's a really, really good number three wide receiver. Uh, Connor Williams, so you bring in a starting a guard from the Cowboys. Now you've upgraded two of the offensive linemen that are protecting uh, Tua. 
hoping that you don't have to put as much pressure on Austin Jackson to be any damn good. Last year's first round pick out of USC, good God, let's hope you don't have to put too much pressure on him for that. Uh, then you upgraded the running back room, which needed some upgrading, brought in Chase Edmonds, brought in Raheem Mostert. Then, of course, they weren't done. They go and make the big damn trade to go get Tyreek Hill. Now, you look at the Dolphins and you say, they looked at Tua and somebody somewhere said, either A, we really, really believe in Tua and we need to help him, or B, we really, really, really need to find out if Tua can be the guy, and the only way to do that is help him. Now, I think it's interesting where I talked about the Dolphins fans are an interesting bunch because on the one hand, totally aligned on the Brian Flores stuff. On the other hand, Dolphins fans, you know this too. Acknowledge it, accept it. You guys are absolutely psycho, some of you, when it comes to your boy Tua. Like, you love you some Tagovailoa. You absolutely do. Especially if some of you are also like Crimson Tide fans. Oh my God, double the psychosis. And I say this as somebody that had to listen to dopey-ass Bears football fans try to convince themselves and others for six years that Rex Grossman wasn't turned Ferguson incarnate. Convince you for, convince others, try to convince others for eight years that Jay Cutler wasn't a piece of crap. Sat there for four years and tried to lie to themselves that Mitchell Trubisky was the real deal. Like, just be careful how much you go out of your way to bend over backwards to defend Tua. He may end up being the guy. I know you're absolutely right. I was much bigger on Justin Herbert in that 2020 draft. I thought Tua was taken around too early. I thought the Dolphins made a big mistake. So far, I'm right. Like, just acknowledge that I'm right, because that's absolutely true. But that doesn't mean that Tua has to be a bust. That doesn't mean that he can't play. That doesn't mean that he won't be a good NFL quarterback. I don't think he's going to be a lead ever. But you're going to find out this year. And if he's that dude, and he goes out there with all these weapons, and he stays healthy for the entire season, which is the most important ability that... Tua Tagovailoa can have right now is the ability of availability. And he goes out there and he actually starts all 17 games and he has a head coach that knows what the hell he's doing, the anti-Brian Flores, if you will. And he'll sit there and put Tua in good spots and they'll unleash these weapons like Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle and Mike Gesicki, you know, and Cedric Wilson. It wouldn't be inconceivable that Tua throws for 4,100, 4,200 yards and maybe 26 to 30 touchdowns. And if you get that, damn it, if you're the Dolphins, you're feeling a lot better. If you get that, you're probably going to the playoffs. But what if you don't? What if Tua gets hurt and misses like half the season? Or what if he goes out there and he's kind of mid? Like he could sit there and make all the excuses and defenses you want, but at some point in time, like them, them have got to kind of kick rocks. And that's the good thing at least. I'll say this, Dolphins fans that might be raging inside at me right now. The good thing is, there's not really any excuse left. They gave him the offensive-minded head coach that knows what the hell he's doing on the offensive side of the ball. They gave him help on the offensive line that was badly needed. They gave him help in the backfield, which was badly needed. They gave him help out there on the receiving core, which was badly needed. They've helped to us significantly. And if the results don't show, it's because Tua probably blows, and it's time to accept that. But if he does, man, the Dolphins start to get a little bit more exciting to talk about in the years to come. Um, and I've talked about this team in terms of the strengths. I've already talked quite at length about the receiving core. Like, I wish the Chicago Bears would surround Justin Fields with this type of talent. I really do. I like the pass rushing unit that the Miami Dolphins have as well. Um, I like their upgraded backfield. You know, Miles Gaskin's going to be more of a role player uh, versus like a featured back. It's a better place for him to be. I still have some concerns about this team. Offensive line depth. Like what happens when Teron Armstead suffers the inevitable injury that takes him out for half the damn season? Like who do you have that's going to back him up at left tackle? Not a lot of offensive line depth. And I'm not mistaken, didn't they only keep like seven offensive linemen? That feels a bit risky. Especially if Armstead is one of your seven offensive linemen. Don't get mad at me. That's just his history. I'm only speaking facts here. Uh, Tua. Like, at the end of the day, it comes down to Tua. I guess what this is about. And it, it feels unfair to say it all comes down to one player because technically, no, it doesn't. We all know it doesn't. But at the end of the day, for this Dolphins franchise, 
they've put two in that spot, and it's up to him whether he delivers or not. And you're going to get some good indication early on with this team, like get through the bullshit with Tua. Because you're going to find out the first three weeks of the season, they got to go to Baltimore, host Buffalo, to Cincinnati. So you're looking at that and saying, you got Lamar in Baltimore week one. You're hosting Josh Allen in the Bills week two. You got to go to Cincinnati week three. Even if you slot in, you assume that Tua is going to, and McDaniel are going to beat Belichick at least once, maybe twice. Like that's only two of your wins for the damn season. Uh, that's a rough start to the schedule. Now for them, the good thing is, is after that first three weeks, like I don't want Dolphins fans to think that if that team starts off one and two, that it's reason to panic. That might be as good as they can do there. If they go two and one, you got to feel outstanding. Uh, but if you go one and two there, you come into those next six games, weeks four through nine, you've got the Jets on the road. You've got the Vikings at home. You've got the Steelers at home. You go to Detroit, to Chicago, host Cleveland. Like that's where you could really make some hay right there. And let's say you are one and two through the first three weeks. And all of a sudden you come through weeks four through nine. And in that six game stretch, you're four and two or you're five and one. Now you're talking about being seven and two. Six and three, nine weeks through the season. Like you're talking about the playoffs at that point. And then we're also going to have a tough stretch there for the Dolphins at the end of the year because they got to go to San Francisco and to the Chargers uh, weeks 13 and 14, to Buffalo in week 15. Again, the schedule makers did not do them any favors here. Gave them a really tough start the first couple of weeks and then said, yeah, we're going to give you three fucking road games back to back to back. Good luck with that. And then you got Green Bay at home in week 17. Excuse me, I'm getting all my weeks screwed up. I forget it's an 18-week season with 17 games now. My apologies. And then you close out on the road with your inevitable Tua beats Bill Belichick team, whether it's due to Tua or not, to close out the season. I'm actually buying the Dolphins a little bit right now. I really am. I may regret this. I am not the biggest Tua fan. But goddamn, I mean, if he doesn't ball out this year, then he just blows, period. He is in a position and has an opportunity to play some really good football. I think he at least plays solid football this year. I've got the Dolphins winning 10 games, making the playoffs, finishing second in this division. I love the Mike McDaniel hire for them. I love the approach of, you've got their young quarterback, now go out there and help them. They've done that. Now it's up to you, Tua. Show us what you can do.